Here we go. What is going on, Cover One crew? Welcome back. We're doing more scouting reports because the NFL draft is vastly approaching. It is right around the corner, less than two weeks away. You got to love it. So excited. We're talking Brian Thomas Jr., LSU product. And I mean, there is a lot of waves talking about this man. Is he going to be the quality dude? Is he a little bit raw? I mean, what does he do on the field? Led everybody in touchdowns this past year. He's so good at what he does, but there are some question marks to be seen and had. So let's talk a little. Brian Thomas, junior LSU wide receiver. You know, when we started this entire NFL draft process months ago, I had already dissected his film, you know, to the, you know, uh, minimal levels. I watched a lot of LSU contests this past year as well. But, I, you know, there was certain aspects of his game. I was like, yeah, he's great. He looks very good, puts up a lot of good quality numbers. But how do I really feel about his game? And I think, you know, I went through his film once again, and I feel a little bit more comfortable to suggest what I believe he is. But let's start off with those measurables. He stands 6'3", not 6'5", y'all. Everyone thought he was 6'5". 6'3", 209. He is 21 years of age. Played in 38 contests. 127 receptions. Almost 2,000 yards. 1897. A good 14.9 on the average. And 24 receiving touchdowns. 17 of which came this past year, which was very impressive. No question. But I mean, he is, statistically speaking, did have his breakout campaign this past season, which got everybody on the radar but LSU was something of that enigma you know in that second year under the Kelly system we saw even Daniels become that Heisman we saw you know uh, Malik Neighbors take the next step in his progression and then assisted with a Brian Thomas Jr. to be that guy so he's got some pros got a lot of them great size and frame even though he's not 6'5 he does play extremely large he is 6'3 209 but like I'm saying he plays bigger than what he is even at 6'3 that's why a lot of people I mean they were they were fudging those numbers y'all saying he was 6'5", but I'm telling you, he does play very big. It's great size and frame, absolutely. Electric ex explosive speed, this is what gets everybody excited as well for a man his size. 4-3-3 at the combine, I mean, on the 40 times, so good, and it does translate on film. When he's on those go routes, when he's on those sevens, I mean, it is very good. He's so fast in the open field, definitely pulls away from his defenders as he does uh, sprint down the field. Very good in that respect. Very fluid running style, and it's something that you love to see from your wide receivers and running backs. You know me. This is the MO for me when I talk about wide receivers and running backs. How fluid are you? You know, tight-hipped? Don't like it. Are you, you know, clunky down the field with that footwork? Don't like it. He's very fluid in that running style as well, and he will make people take notice of those jets and speed. Fantastic boundary footwork. I think this is probably... One of the better things out of his game, even though he put up a uh, plethora of statistical achievement this past year, his boundary footwork is so damn good. And it's, I, you know, you talk about a raw prospect. This is, a, you know, almost to the polished understanding because he's always trying to get two feet inbounds. In college football, obviously, it's the one foot inbounds counts as an inbound play or touchdown. He's getting both feet down and he's very aware of his surroundings, understands how to double tap, toe drag, sweat get those two feet in and that's something that you definitely want to see that just suggests a massive amount of body control and field awareness to understand I love his boundary footwork when he is making those catches so that is huge pluses for a young man still trying to learn his craft in some respects I think he's got that one down to a T he pulls away from coverage with that long speed there is no question you put him on the go put him in the slot you try to make him on the sevens and he's gone man he definitely once he gets past you know past his defensive back and then he hits the accelerators he definitely uh, creates that cushion of separation and if he goes to the NFL with a very strong arm quarterback some are suggesting Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills you could absolutely see this timing is going to be everything get him down the field and he will make the play man subtle off the line stutter step and burst I do like this a lot as well while you don't see him get jammed up quite often enough I mean there is opportunities where you have seen it but I do like the fact that he's got this like, little subtle you know stutter step is it polished? No. I think there's a lot of work that can be refined in his uh, release package game as well. But that little stutter step off the line goes around his defensive back and then he just kicks in that burst, man. It's absolutely pluses for me when you're talking about a guy his size with the speed game. Very good in this respect. Great catch radius. Something you expected from a guy who is 6'3". Very long arm catching ability. 
I love it, man. Whether it's jump balls, back shoulder fades, whether it's on the sideline, like I said, extending those arms over the shoulder, extending his arms. You love to see that from your wide receiver. He rarely short arms a pass, and I do absolutely love it. So even if the defensive back is right on his back, on his heels, he's able to extend when the ball is placed where it's supposed to be very good in that respect. Hands are soft, man. He corrals the ball in. <clears throat> I don't see a lot of issues with the hands. You don't see a lot of slapping. Some double catching is there and present, but again, it's going to be worked out with more reps and more opportunities and more experience on the field. But I mean, for me, the hands are very good and it's what you want to see. You know, if, if the wide receiver is double catching or if it slaps off the hands, you don't like that. You don't want to see that, man. Corral the ball in, no slap. It's like uh, you don't even hear the ball hit his hands. That's what you want to see when you're looking at your wide receivers. Great arm push off creates leverage and separation. So this is one of these uh, situations where you do see if you don't have, you know, the full rounded talent yet in your or technically sound talent, I should say, where it could be coached up in his game, at least he has this one as well. So you're talking about the boundary footwork, which I think is absolutely pluses the great arm push off. So when you're talking about who did it the best in the NFL, it was Antonio Brown. He would give his defensive back that quick arm jab to make him, uh, you know, fall back just a little bit. But if you fully extend your arm in the NFL they're going to call that offensive PI every single time you got to learn it's a craft man and you, Brian Thomas does this extremely well and I absolutely love it in his game he's able to at least just push and you know give a little nudge while he's you know trying to attempt for the catch he creates that leverage separation especially in contested catch ability love this about a Brian Thomas and it's very good so a guy with a lot of, a lot of speed a lot of talent understands at least how to generate some separation that way where certain aspects of his his game aren't necessarily refined so he had to you know make something happen and I do love the push off in that sense man wins contested catches regularly 110 percent man you throw it up in his direction he's always in the you watch his film he's pointing for the football he's telling uh, Jaden Daniels throw me the damn football he pointed up in the air and contested catch ability is definitely there coming back for the football especially in red zone opportunities absolutely there I mean yak ability is also top end is it great and when it talk about elusive ability we're not quite there yet but I'm talking and when he does have the ball in the open field, he's got the wheels to get around the defenders and make a house call, man. 4-3-3, definitely not out of the question to go all the way to the end zone. Like I did mention, breakout season was in 2023, 68 for 11, 77, and 17 touchdowns. So majority of his statistical stat line achievement did come from 2023. He also led the FBS with 17 touchdowns. So everybody's getting bullish and uh, taking notice of this man because of the stats that were put up here in 2023. But he's got some cons. We got to talk <clears throat> raw tendencies and raw prospect overall. I'm comfortable saying this at this point. He's not quite there yet as this polished, refined, you know, but he's got full on potential elite capabilities. There is no question in my mind. It just needs more. Why was he the late bloomer? This is the biggest question I got. Under 400 yards as a freshman and a sophomore more and then he finally breaks out so we understand you know some guys take a little bit of time to mature and find their game on the field I don't think this was the issue I think that there's just I don't know it, it's very difficult to pinpoint why he wasn't as successful but again the offensive system at LSU took some time under Kelly first year with Jaden Daniels with Kelly I mean it wasn't as good it was okay and then they absolutely found their stride this past season in 2023 so I mean there is issues in this why the late bloomer why was he not able to put up statistics early on in his career but there is raw tendencies that he definitely is going to have to get coached out in the NFL hopefully after he gets his payday when he's drafted he can continues with his craft because we've seen guys just get to this point and say I'm good enough and they, they don't uh, you know round out the rest of their game catch timing isn't always consistent so while I do like his contested catch ability the timing isn't always there which will you know inhibit drop passes you know uh, you know uh, confusion on the field field awareness I mean it's not always there that's going to come with time also especially with building chemistry with your quarterback in the pros definitely will be something that uh, needs to be refined and looked upon man limited route tree I mean go route slants back shoulder red zone jump balls that's basically all he was asked to do because he had a guy like Malik neighbors opposite side of him doing the business so he was utilized in those big play opportunities, getting those touchdowns in the red zone. And I mean, you can't hate that. If that's what you're drafting this man for, for year one to year three, to do those go routes, the seam routes, and get open in the field and then take it off with a yak ability, then you're going to be absolutely, you know, happy with your draft purchase in this uh, respect. But you do want to hope that he's going to round out the rest of his game because for his size, his speed, and his uh, playmaking ability, you understand that he could be a legitimate wide receiver one in this league. He just 
just has to work on some of these things and get coached up a little bit. Route technician absolutely needs improvement. I mean, the plant uh, steps, the juke fakes, footwork, the comeback routes, just more added uh, attention to detail in his, uh, you know, route tree would do a world of benefit for his game. And I do like that about it. I am hoping that they do get to coach him in this sense. Don't just pigeonhole at Brian Thomas to be a go route specialist because he could be so much more than that. And he could legitimate be, le legitimately be, like I said, a wide receiver one in the NFL because he does have that type of ability, man. Added strength would be of benefit. I mean, only 11 bench reps on the combine was a little bit shocking to me. I thought he would have put up a little bit more. So more strength will hold, uh, absolutely aid in press break in his physicality on the field so that nobody can touch this man. He could turn into another grown ass man, AJ Brown style, if you're talking that with even better wheels. And I, and I do believe that that should be the ceiling of where it is for a Brian Thomas Jr., especially with his speed and capability. Add some more strength, be that physical presence, that bully on the field, and then you will absolutely understand that you will be one of the top dogs in the league, man. Seem to be giving up on plays at times. Once again, maturity aspect. Why is he doing this? You know, feeling like he's not involved in the play. He doesn't have to necessarily, you know, produce at that moment. I want to see guys always 110% on the field. I get it. Some plays you take off, but you want to see that dedication to the craft, whether it be run blocking, whether it be, you know, creating separation for your other wide receivers. Let's see a little bit more of that. Brian Thomas, and I absolutely love his game. I think he's quality. He was my number five wide receiver coming into power rankings, so I do like his game a lot. There are some raw, you know, tendencies, but I do like his game. But for grading purposes, everybody gets a grade score, and he is a good one. Lots of potential. 79.8% on my grade score. He almost cracked the 80% mark. It was very close. I was almost there. I just couldn't do it, man. There is too many raw tendencies that I want to see cleaned up as we sit today. Do I believe the ceiling is extremely high for a Brian Thomas? 110%. I do believe added weight, strength, and then potential, you know, rounding out the technical issues in his game with his route and his uh, release packages. He could legit be a phenomenal wide receiver in the NFL that is trusted as a wide receiver one, but I think he does stack up extremely well versus this loaded NFL uh, wide receiver class. He's is definitely a good one and one I'm uh, absolutely looking forward to in the pros. So there you have that is Brian Thomas Jr. LSU product. Like I said, gushing over all the things he does extremely well because he is that good of a talent. Just needs some refinement and hopefully he does latch on with a team that will help him grow and not, you know, just keep him going on the nines because I think that would be an absolute dreadful waste of the overall talent. But nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments, give me your thoughts, and we'll see you next time. I am out.